Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Navy League Sea Airspace Conference and Trade Show right outside Washington, D.C. in National Harbor, uh, Maryland, where our coverage is sponsored by Fincantieri, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and Leonardo DRS. And we're here at the Navy's Information Warfare uh, Pavilion uh, to talk to my oldest friend in this uh, uh, hall, uh, United States Navy Rear Admiral Christian Boris uh, Becker, who is the commander of uh, Spay War uh, and graduate of Hunter College High School class of uh, 1983. I was 1984. Uh, and it's always a pleasure, sir, seeing you, especially uh, over here at Navy League. Uh, Vago, always a pleasure to see you and uh, a, a great, great venue to, to be able to talk to you today. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and um, I want to get sort of a strategic level take from you, right? National security strategy is out, national defense strategy is out, uh, CNO, uh, Admiral Richardson, uh, and as well as uh, Admiral Moran, uh, the Vice Chief of Naval Operations, but the Secretary and the Under, everybody's been driving the message of greater in integration, greater preparation for great power competition. And you guys, you and your command, touch virtually all the mechanisms to allow uh, uh, all the magic to happen ultimately. From that standpoint, talk to us about from a strategic level guidance, how you guys are delivering at a deck plate level. Well, Vago, I'll start by pulling the thread from the, one of the first things that uh, Secretary Mattis has told us to do, and that is to create a more lethal force for us through modernization. That's what we've got to do. And if you look at what the Navy is that our nation needs in order to create that more lethal force, we have to have a Navy that's bigger and better and more networked. Also a Navy that's agile, filled with talented people and a Navy that's ready. Well, for us in Spay War and in the world of information warfare, certainly building a, a more networked Navy, and I'd argue a better Navy, is fundamental to the mission that we have, as well as a more ready Navy. Today, we have sailors and Marines out there operating our equipment across the globe. We're sustaining that equipment. We're making sure that they're ready for a fight tonight. But also, we're trying to think of what it is we can do to make our capabilities much more integrated, much more networked, so we can del deliver lethal um, capabilities when and where necessary. This is a strategic competition. And if we look at the investments, the trillions of dollars of investments in platforms and weapon systems, well, this is the place, information warfare, where those weapon systems and those platforms become an integrated capabilities, capabilities that we need to be able to deter, compete, and win. Um, it, the the um, guidance is clear, but the challenge is uh, manifest and multiple, right? Um, there are generations of systems upon systems upon systems. Um, I was at uh, a discussion last week, uh, and the CEO of a leading defense company you know, basically said, we have hundreds of data systems, and that's been a real challenge, so we're going to SAP. Not, I'm not making a plug for SAP, uh, but Brad Feldman of Cubic, uh, was, you know, but that transition is going to pay manifest and multiple dividends for us. From your standpoint, what's the trick to try to get all of these disparate systems from across the Navy? Whole series of new systems are coming online, for example, Columbia, uh, uh, the uh, ballistic missile submarine, just because we, we were talking about it a moment ago. But talk to us about how you're doing that to try to make sense of it, to field the, the secure systems but ones that are also give you that growth opportunity. You know, it's it's a very, very complex dynamic. Uh, it is, and uh, it, it gets pretty complicated and technical pretty quickly. Uh, well, let's start with the data, the resource of the data. We have, well, I think the technical term is grunches of data, uh, across grunches of databases. Um, we can't effectively mine those data for the information, for the intelligence, for the, the business analytics that are in those data that can not only help us reform our acquisition processes and be able to lower the cost of ownership and acquisition, but also to make us, our, our capabilities more effective. We've got to get at those data. Now the way we can do that is to start to evolve our technology to support mining those data and collecting them. Uh, so things like moving into cloud, uh, both for a shore, and looking at how we do that afloat in their expeditionary forces uh, to bring the capabilities of data analytics, big data, scalability that cloud offers for us. Uh, that's one way. Uh, the other way is that we have a mindset, a mindset of information as the resource, a mindset of data as the bedrock of that information as a resource, and then how we're going to use that in all of our systems. Do you, how, at the very time that you're trying to do this, the counter challenge is that the adversary, uh, by doctrine and by strategy, has made it very, very clear that they want to try to break every single one of, you know, just like we're trying to interrupt their kill chains, they want to interrupt our kill chains, whether through electronic warfare means, whether through cyber means, which means that intersects with you. 
Um, and the mentality that we've built over the last, you know, since the end of the Cold War has been communicate because we can and we have that flexibility. Talk to us about how you guys are building in and thinking about the challenge of disrupted communications in the future and how to operate all of these disparate systems, be able to access the cloud in an MCON alpha, in an emissions controlled, full up, I, I can't radiate or emit uh, scenario. We have a concept that we call the information warfare platform. Uh, and that's what we talk about when we talk about our float and expeditionary networks, where we treat the network, not as a network, but as an information warfare platform. Just like an aircraft is a warfare platform. It's an airplane, and it, we've got airplanes that uh, are quite capable, but until they have weapon systems, until they have radar systems and communication systems, and you get my point, uh, until there's something hanging on a hard point, it, it's a great airplane. You put that all together, it's a weapon system, a warfare system. We're taking that same approach with our network. How do we architect our network, and in particular canes, so that we have an infrastructure that we can modernize at the pace required to stay current and, and to, uh, to deal with obsolescence, with a layer of services on top of that that is not tightly coupled to that hardware. So we can evolve and improve and uh, create new capabilities without that tight integration. Tight integration requires lots of testing and slows you down and costs you more. And then on top of that would be the analogous weapon systems, the applications, and the use of the data that reside in that, that warfare platform for things like personnel, logistics, communications, command and control. All those capabilities are themselves the weapon systems, if you will, of an information warfare platform. Architecting that in a way so that we can disaggregate the, the capabilities, the services, from the applications, from the underlying infrastructure, that's the information warfare platform. And uh, today is a great day, this, this event is a great event to learn more about that, both through um, the SPAWAR uh, exhibitors here, as well as our shipmates from uh, POC4I and POEIS. Because the programs inside the POs, they're leading the charge in delivering that capability. And, uh, but from your standpoint, is it, are you confident where you are, given what adversaries are doing to try to get into our decision cycles and information systems? I am very confident that we all get it uh, across the board and across the syscoms. And in fact, SPAWAR is the technical authority for information assurance, uh, which means we're setting the standards by which the other syscoms are going to continue to acquire cyber security capabilities. And working across the syscoms is a very powerful thing. Uh, we're sort of uh, in the lead of setting those standards to then be executed by the other syscoms, uh, NAVFAC, NAVSUP, NAVAIR, NAVC. Uh, that's a tight integration across the engineering teams. Uh, now it's into the process of actually making sure that we're following the uh, what we call the risk management framework as we deliver new capabilities. Uh, it's a little bit different than the old days. We're trying to go faster, but we're also trying to make sure we have the right rigor and discipline uh, for the capabilities that we deliver so we can operate them safely and securely. Um, let me ask you about innovation. Um, you know, innovation is a buzzword. Every Navy leader I've talked to, uh, you know, for many years in the Navy prides itself on innovation. But there's a particular drive to innovate and innovate more quickly. But there are challenges with that. Everybody's got a lot of good ideas. What's the process you use to accelerate the uh, vacuuming up of good ideas or the submission of good ideas, but then what's the rigorous process you use to vet, okay, what's a good idea, what's not a good idea, and how do you test it to make sure that you know when you're making a technology bet or advising leadership on it, that you're coming out in the right place. You know, talk to us about that process from when an idea comes in. How do you sift it down and then act on what's the what's the right idea? There isn't one process. Um, there's no um, single way to, to make that happen. Uh, we've got a variety of ways that we try to bring in innovation through innovators, through the people. As an example, at our system centers, uh, we have a, a, a program called NICE, uh, which stands for Naval Innovation uh, and Scientific Experimentation, I think. <laughs> uh, I got to get my dick nav back and look that one up. Uh, the beauty of the NICE program is that we have funds by which we can execute small projects, rapid projects, and through which uh, our engineers, our scientists, uh, and, and particularly our new professionals um, can pitch an idea and take that idea through a project level with funding uh, to research capability. Uh, and this is early on kind of research, um, and that spreads across the Naval Research and Development Enterprise um, across the labs. And it's very powerful, because it may be small dollars, and it may be uh, small areas that they're targeting, 
but it's building that workforce, that knowledge base of innovators uh, who can then see things come to fruition or not and learn from what didn't work because if it failed, it's still successful if we learn something from it. Uh, so that's a very exciting thing. And, and through some of those projects, we've transitioned capability to higher levels of maturation uh, on the way towards um, intercepting with a program of record for uh, game-changing capabilities. Uh, and I've seen some game-changing capabilities. Uh, I joke with one of the scientists that uh, she's trying to bend the laws of physics. Uh, and she, of course, she doesn't think so, but I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, that's one way. Uh, at the other end, uh, the Navy's put in place a, um, a capability to uh, uh, speed through acquisitions, accelerating acquisition where the board of directors, if you will, for making those decisions consists of the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development and Acquisition, the Chief of Naval Operations, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps. They are the only people who can say no. That makes things happen very quickly. Well, so as uh, somebody who served as, uh, you know, throughout the acquisition stream to PEO, now the commander of a major uh, systems command, um, how, how has Hondo Gertz changed that? You know, he's the Navy acquisition chief, you, you just mentioned him. Uh, he is one of the people who does have one of the coolest names in defense, actually. Uh, could be a Western Marshal or, or heading the Navy acquisition <laughs> system. Uh, shout out to you, Hondo. Um, you know, talk to us about the guidance you're getting from him and how that's changing how you do business and how you feel it's accelerating uh, things because that's where the Navy wants to get to is, is accelerated, more agile. How, how is his guidance to you changing how you're executing? Uh, Secretary Gertz gave a talk yesterday at breakfast that I think is a pretty um, uh, accurate summation of everything he's been, been uh, expressing to us since he took over. Um, and I think one of the, the principal ways uh, to see that is he said, the operators, are the ones who should be able to determine when something's ready. That the risk of not, <laughs> excuse me, of not having it in the field is uh, not, that's the risk they're trying to manage rather than the risk of, well, that, you know, do I know that this meets all the requirements? Uh, that's speed, because it's speed based on operational outcome. And that's how he operated at SOCOM. Uh, and so we operated SOCOM within the lines of regulations and policy and law acquisition law and there's, there's some myth that as SOCOM, he could just color outside the lines. Uh, that's not the case. He'll be the first to tell you. He colored inside the lines, but he went across the entire spectrum of his capabilities for acquisition. That's his other message. You know, let's use every tool we have in the toolkit for acquisition, uh, whether it's your standard sort of process for large systems or uh, OTAs or other parts of the FAR. Use it all so we can move faster. He's also told us, find something that has a 50% chance of failure and go after it. Now, of course, with you know, a, a, some uh, <laughs> data to back it up and right. some uh, wisdom besides the data, uh, but he wants us to look for things where we can try and have risk of failure and learn and move forward. He's also pushing decision making down uh, and that's going to speed things up. I'm pretty excited. Um, let me ask you one last question. You're, um, it's, there's so much technology being developed across the Navy. There's so much technology being developed and so many people doing so many innovative things across your command alone. Um, and there's this debate, you know, you'll hear it from CEOs that, you know, if only we knew what we really know within our organizations to better maximize and leverage that. I think in some cases the military is ahead of it. What are some of the mechanisms, aside from conferences like this, but some of the mechanisms you're using to make sure that you have full visibility on all the smart things you guys are doing to match the right solution to the right, right, right uh, problem at the right time? Uh, I'll give a shout out here to the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy, uh, Bill Bray. Um, he's working across the NRDNE, the Naval Research and Development Establishment, uh, and across all the warfare centers and labs, uh, and pulling forward opportunities for innovation in a structured process. Uh, I could spend some time talking offline about uh, something called Antex, uh, where over a period of months, projects came together uh, to meet uh, the mission need of amphibious landings, um, and you know, sort of tabletop, and then a few months more of development, and then they were into operations and demonstration at Camp Pendleton. Uh, and then the, some of those got winnowed down to go into further experiments and operations, and some of those will then go into transition into programs of record. Uh, 
and it's moving fast, it's moving rapidly, and it's moving across development and warfare system centers and labs. It is really exciting. Uh, that is a nugget on which we need to build uh, across the syscoms and across other pro programs of record. And the other thing is it comes down to relationships. Uh, and uh, that's one of the best things about being in this business, uh, is you get to know and work with great people. Uh, and when you start to, uh, to build those strong relationships, um, you, can, you can work together uh, across what might be stovepipes uh, to deliver the integrated capability that our Navy Marine Corps need. Um, now I'm going to ask you a, a more uh, frivolous question. Uh, you're a New York Yankee fan. I am a New York Yankee fan, but full disclosure, we're sort of national fans now because our family uh, grew up here. Although I don't think you became Padres fans uh, out there in San Diego. We love Petco Park. <laughs> Um, now, uh, the Padres have a very different record from the New York Yankees, and uh, Boston, how are you feeling about the season so far? We've got many games ahead of us. <laughs> uh, wisely said, Admiral. Uh, Rear Admiral Christian Becker, uh, Christian Boris Becker, sir, thanks very, very much, and, and best of the family, and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Bog, always a pleasure.